Hey guys, it's Skybird, and today we've got a bit of a progress update. Very happy with the progress on this guy right here, the Sky Tyrant, who now has two legs officially, as well as, of course, those working wings. That head, not a mouth just yet. I'm kind of toying around with the idea of potentially putting something in the mouth. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And, of course, the tail here as well, which is a bit of a stand-in, but does, does work does the job that I wanted to do. With that said, of course, if you are enjoying this content, make sure you subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. And we gained like 30 subscribers yesterday for some reason. I don't know why, but hey, thanks. That really helps out. Uh, with that said, though, let's get right on into it. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm really happy with where this is going currently. The plan is, of course, that this is going to use at least a handful of custom pieces. Not many, of course, because I want to treat this like a Bionicle set from a new wave, right? So new waves usually do introduce new parts for that wave that are often carried over. This build right here, for example, has this armor piece in the center, which is sort of a stand-in for something else, mostly because this piece also has some issues. Interestingly enough, the holes on the side of this model can actually lock up and get hit by these little flaps on the side of the cheeks for the dragon head here. It's a little bit annoying. It's a little bit cumbersome, but thankfully there's a lot of mobility in those legs that helps to prevent that. So I'm very happy with it. And in terms of articulation, it's pretty good. It has double jointed legs because it's a pretty decently sized model. Um, I think nearing 350 pieces for what you see here. So all in all, not awful by any means, but I wanted these legs to be able to move like as much as possible. So you can actually get them much further forward by adjusting, you know, the, the placement, if you will, of this socket back here, just making sure things don't get caught up in it, but it can literally duck so far as to like its head can reach the ground just from its legs moving. And then, of course, it can get quite tall as well. It's taller than Tuma from head to toe, not counting the wings themselves. So it's a decently sized little uh, creation, and I am very happy with it. He's going to sit off to the side over here, and I apologize if you can hear something out the window because there's apparently construction going on outside. But let's HUD on over to, uh, let's see here, <laughs> to Studio really quick so you can see some of the items uh, that some of the members of my Discord community actually came up with here. Um, so this was actually really interesting because someone had posed the question, how exactly are you going to store Thornax, right? Which makes sense. You know, the Xamar launchers obviously came with several different methods for storing Xamar spheres. If you had that little rib cage piece from the Anika sets that could store them, or even the Midac Blaster, which had storage built into it itself. So the method I showed yesterday was this one right here, using these pods and actually opening them up. You can fit four Thornax in here really comfortably. A fifth one will fit in here as well, though it'll start to kind of bend the spikes on a little bit. Not a big deal, of course. All of these are rubbery parts, but still, you know, worth looking at. That was actually found by a member on the Discord uh, server called Jake, J4KE. So thank you very much to them. They had proposed this idea. I decided to test it, and sure enough, it works really well. And I think it's even better, too, because this kind of looks like a plant, even though it's technically like an egg sack. And, you know, thornax are fruit, right? So it's kind of cool to see that a fruit and a plant are going together. <laughs> anyway, I mentioned that in a previous video, of course. But what you can see here on screen is another method with this sort of built up cage. And this is honestly brilliant using these uh, hard uh, plastic bar pieces on the back end here and then using some more rubbery tube pieces on the front end. These are actually uh, from the Destroyer Droid Star Wars Technic set from all the way back in like the early 2000s. And they come with a really soft plastic or rubber even uh, tube on each side. So very easy to insert and remove these Thornax. And of course... You could have it closed on all four sides or potentially just leave one of these bar pieces out. What I really like about this is the sheer amount of connection points. Obviously, these are bar shaped, so you can connect them to anything with a clip or with a hollow stud, which is always very nice because the two halves of these knob gears can come apart, right? But also on top of that, you can add, now granted, this is my custom chain piece, but a chain piece or something else to the axle hole on either side or really kind of do whatever you want, right? So I really love that because it's very versatile and it has a sort of rugged feel to it that works really well with the steampunk vibe, works really well with the sky pirate vibe. So I think it honestly works perfectly. Really happy with this one here. But the whole reason that we're kind of experimenting with this stuff is we've had members on the server kind of chatting a little bit about how to make like automatic reloading Thornax and this and that. And it's, it's led to some really fun conversations, but that is actually a good thing to really think about, right? The Xamar are 
honestly incredible just because they are a sphere, right? So it's so easy to implement them in basically any type of launcher. But Thornax, they're not a true sphere. They have a hard band of plastic with some hard plastic on the inside covered in rubber on all four sides and these spikes, which makes it very difficult to use it in certain types of launchers. You can use it with the original Xamarin launcher with some success. You can, of course, use it with the Thornax launcher, which I, which I think is great. But what about something like a cannon, right? We mentioned this Sky Pirate vibe as mentioned before, and someone had brought up, well, why not use a cannon? This is actually something I planned on doing, though I didn't think to actually incorporate the Thornax themselves with it. And I think it's a really smart idea. Now, I'm still not set on if I want to make this something that holds more than one Thornax at a time, or just one, because that does lead to other issues coming later, but uh, it's still really interesting. The main thing to worry about, of course, is how the plunger mechanism works, how the actual cannon will store these, but still kind of look like a cannon. And then, of course, you have things like, oh, well, what about the peg leg or something like that, right? And I think that that's fair because there are a lot of different aspects of the pirate theme that I think work really well. And one of them, I think a, a sort of cliche but fun one is like oh well what if he has a cannon for a peg leg you know and so designing it to work with something like that is definitely an interesting concept at the very least but i'm not against it i think it's a really cool really fun to sort of lean into even further something i plan to continue to do but he heading oh pardon me gonna lose my voice here heading on over to a blender very quickly let's go ahead and Pop that in real quick. We have the pirate wheel. This was actually a design I came up with a while ago for a completely different project working on some Borok shields in the past. It's a very simple premise here using one of the old, um, it's the Anika playset weapons, right? They have this little like arrow shaped one. It's a really fun little weapon and basically just putting eight of those on all sides, right? So I did this originally to create the mosaic shield, which I use for my ice Borok. And then I also made an item very similar to this called the sun shield. Well, I had thought I need something that's like a pirate wheel, right? Because I plan on making this large airship, this flying airship, and how cool would it be to actually have a wheel that does something, right? And so the idea, of course, is to add an axle in the center instead of the pinhole, of course, maybe adding some pinholes around the sides and then having these bar connections so a character can grab onto it easily, but they're not locked in place, right? So I think that that's a really cool idea, and of course, it can be used as a shield as well. So it just makes sense. Uh, so it's a really fantastic item honestly uh and part of my inspiration from this was from actually king sidrak who'd made a somewhat similar piece um from let me see here this sword thing here which was a lovely piece as well and so i figured well if i've got a slot for this item set aside why not make something why not throw something together you know and so yeah just simply extruding um some bars from a piece that i had <laughs> i had done i thought it was a lot of fun and i, I think that's one of the things i really enjoy about making custom pieces is when you can acknowledge um, other parts that have existed in the past, right? Working textures from other pieces in, you know, working like this texture here, or someone actually posted on my server earlier today, uh, an armor piece that they had designed, which uses the, uh, I don't have it on me, unfortunately, but the, um, what is it called? The Chronicler Staff Weapon. Like it utilizes part of the shaping of that. It's a wonderful piece. And so I love that kind of stuff. Anytime you can sort of call back to something else, uh, it's, it's a fun little Easter egg, you know, and maybe you can do it as a little bit of a game just to be like, oh, which ones can I name? Which one? Anyway, so I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but thank you all so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the, uh, the channel, of course, <laughs> make sure you are subscribed if you're not. And even if you're not, thank you very much for watching. Of course, you can check out the Discord, join the conversation uh, down in the comments below, or of course, check out that Discord, Instagram, or Patreon if you want to support the channel and get some perks. Links for those will be in the description, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.